Coast. West Coast dispensed with an intra-club game for the second straight year, which could have put the Eagles a step behind their rivals in match fitness. Essendon changed tack for this year's pre-season, resting big names Watson, Stanton, Fletcher and Hurley. It gave youngsters like Anthony Long, nephew of former Bomber star Michael Long, a window to show his wares. And he received a tough initiation in the first minute. And that's welcome to the big time. Gary Whedon converted his tackle into points. That's a tight angle. That's certainly something they've practised plenty of times. And he shows that by threading the needle for the first goal of the game. Ashton Hams doubled the Eagles' lead soon after. Here's Lynch, one-on-one -on -one with Pears. We know it's a big turning circle, so he handles smart to Hams. Did he get the logistics right? I think he did. What a start for the Eagles. Fraser McGuinness bombed away at an unguarded goal. Gee, Slattery caught one high. There's a little bit unlucky. Fraser McGuinness was looking in the lips, though. How about that? Garrick Whedon with two goals in his first four disposals. He's had the impact with his tackling so far, and both times... He's been able to convert. Travis Collier finally got the Bombers on the move. You can see the goals didn't go for nine. Tried to make sure of it for six. Oh. And didn't he do it well? Michael Maskoulis notched West Coast's fifth major for a 32-9 half-time lead. Jake Melksham found the target straight after the resumption. Right, it was a beautiful oh, tap down. Wow. Beautifully worked too. Hams drove through his second to keep the Eagles flying clear. And that's looked like it's going to tail back beautifully for a goal. So the Eagles answer. Corey Delolio deemed to score with his knee, and that denied Essendon a six-pointer. Oh, oh that's off the shin bone. Mark Nikoski ensured West Coast stayed in the comfort zone, while the Eagles added insurance through the Bombers' untidy defence. Set up for a big mark. There was a couple that were having a crack, and Marston's going to kick an easy goal. Josh Hill made it nine goals for West Coast, the most in the competition so far, before Essendon made the score respectable. Here's Delolio. Let's see if he can get a goal. He deserved one earlier, and he's got it now. Well done. Full-time West Coast 9-357, Essendon 5-6-36. We probably wanted to focus on a few things defensively today, and I think... We did that, that showed in the scoreboard. You know, we defended well and then turned it over and got a few goals. Charles Christian, Big Pond Sport. Under new coach Ross Lyon, Fremantle players expect to be a hard-nosed, fit team prepared to push right to the end. Essendon made half a dozen changes following the defeat to West Coast in the first game and the Dockers were on the board in the opening minute through Paul Duffield. And then straight away under the boot, there's a lovely goal. David Hill got the Bombers rolling soon after before Fremantle's pick number 58, Lockie Neal, introduced himself in style. In the end, it's a snap, a goal from Neal, who puts it through. That was classy play all round from Fremantle. Angus Monfries fired through Essendon second to make it a three-point game. Matt DeBoer deployed Nick Subin to get the Dockers the maximum. Nine-pointer. Goes for nine and gets it. At half-time, Fremantle led 26-13. Adam McPhee and Clancy Pearce piggyback 50-metre penalties within two minutes to widen the gap. Get a good look at it there. Perfectly delivered. Neil notched his second to put the Dockers into the 40s. Takes Fremantle out to a 31 point lead. 55 goals in the waffle last year, Corey Delolio brought his kicking boots. Summertime frustration simmered to the surface without any serious overflow as the Dockers forward press paid dividends. Popped it up again. Main, try to get Crowley or Broughton. Ellington, he's a big chance off the left boot. And he puts it through. Full time Fremantle 17556, Essendon 3220. Charles Christian, Big Pond Sport. Big men Dean Cox and Aaron Sandlands met in the middle for the mini derby, aiming to give their teams an unbeaten weekend. Jack Darling and Zach Dawson showed the intensity of February football. Decides to take on and brush past Subin, but in doing so, he kicked oh. the ball. Oh. Darling underneath it and cleaned up. Had to go, that was all right. Yep. Oh, no, I'm quite like to. Dawson 
What do you think there, John? Yeah, no, I thought, I thought it was fair, just contest. a different contest. Both players with eyes on the ball. The West Coast had 13 inside 50s to Fremantle's five, as defence snuffed out most opportunities. Right on the line, he's Subin's... In the last 15 seconds, Garrick Whedon had little to spare to give the Eagles an 11-1 half-time lead. Oh, by the smallest of margins, Whedon puts it through. Darling missed everything with his over-the-top attempt before last year's rising star runner-up stepped up. For Luke Shuey, this is going to make things awfully tough. For Fremantle, and sails right through. A turnover near the wing allowed the Eagles to swoop, and Cox drove home the advantage. Powerful big man who lights it up here at Patterson Stadium, and the Eagles fans are very much liking what they see here tonight. Jaden Pitt couldn't have been much closer to get Fremantle off the ground. Oh, this is for nine. This will help. Oh. Cox with a clincher in the last five minutes. Josh Mellington made sure Fremantle didn't finish goalless. That one holds its line, I reckon. Full-time West Coast 4-6-30, Fremantle 1-4-10. Uh, it was a good hit out, obviously, playing with uh, training all pre-season, trying to get a, a proper match against some quality opposition was great for this footy club. Charles Christian, Big Pond Sport.